language than the actual. If I was in Korea, I'd be up on that floor. Okay. You know, that's at the wheelhead height. Very actively, consciously thinking about um, bringing this in as I attach this coil. I'm bringing the rim slowly, collaring in. So the lift to the base about the same. It's one to one. To be stacked in the tube. Yep, exactly. Hey, this is a big celebration day. This is the first day I've noticed uh, the sun is higher than yeah. greening yep. the building. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, you're welcome. You it's are here coming. for. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> My wife and I say after Valentine's Day, we're allowed to get the steak knives out again. You know. <laughs> oh, so Just in case get... you screw up on Valentine's Day? <laughs> <laughs> no, like prior to that, you gotta hide the knives in the kitchen. You know what I mean? You don't want to be stabbed Cabin each other. So you have to be cold and shitty out. You know, <laughs> Valentine's Day, you get the steak knives out. Again. Grill up outside. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mountains are to the south here, is that right? Growing up in Denver, there is sort of that state, south. That could get confusing for me. And this building's lined up pretty much yeah. Uh, yeah. the paranoia within administrations. Yeah. These college kids are all gonna go like shit and take the place over. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well have it be like a military base. We have, a, we have a Federal Reserve Bank in Helena. That thing is definitely constructed with all that in mind. You can't even get close to that thing. Oh, you live in Helena. I need to talk to you. All right. <laughs> I'm moving to Paulson. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. When? Probably the next summer or sometime after that, we're building a house down there. Were you raised in Montana or something? Belt. Where? Where Belt is? No. It's about 20 something miles east of Great Falls, a little hole in the ground. Okay. <laughs> I was born in Helena. You were born in Helena? Mm -hmm. oh. Helena. Where? Helena. In Helena? My parents are from Roundup, which is north of Billings. Oh. No. It's just the, the way it's done. Yeah, Sheila's yeah. dad's from uh, Dillon. Oh. So when did you move to Helena? I moved to Helena just about, well, June will make six years. Oh. You liking it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I found what I think is a pretty ideal home studio to purchase. And that's oh. been amazing yeah. in the last couple of years, almost two years now. And the, with the Archie Bray Foundation there, the whole clay world comes by yeah. throughout the years. So I just get to see a lot of friends from the clay world come through there, and that's always good. That's cool. I like the story you told when you asked, does that building come go with it? Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I just see the excitement in you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, forget about where I, I can sleep wherever, but yeah. that's the studio I'm in. And she was so cool. She she was like, you know, I, I was there to pick up those the kiln and the slip mixer, and... You know, was looking at the play stories. I mean, my, my brother and his wife, they really wanted to get this house, and uh, it happened to be on this little lake out by Denver in the foothills there, and it was getting to be a bit of a battle with somebody else who wanted it, and they just wrote this long. So the leather on the paddle, does that, like, one um, of the deer you jumped on, or have any sentimental value? It's just leather. It's just leather. It um, essentially, you know, it just keeps it, it keeps the uh, the clay from sticking to the paddle. So it's just leather. Yeah. It, I mean, like I'm thinking, if, if I shot an elk, it would be cool oh, yeah. to do it, put it. I mean, maybe historically, I don't know. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of don't think so. I, mean, I just wonder if it hangs yeah. to you.
Like I have to shoot the squirrels at getting in my insulation. And then I eat them and then I make uh, paint brushes out of the tails and I make fishing lures out of the tails. Just then they kind of mean something to me to, yeah. to use the animal and get them out. Yeah, make use of that. a little difference in mentality. I, I found um, that a squirrel had um, birthed some young in the insulation up in the rafters in my uh, my attached or detached garage. And so I, I got to work and I built a, a house for them. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you know. A house away from your house. No, I yeah. No, I feel guilty. <laughs> I don't think anything compares to the woman that makes the a couple of big uh, jars to calcine it, so we stuck it in the, in the electric films, and we made uh, ash out of this mm -hmm. moose poop. And then he made a moose poop ash blade. Nice. And, uh, but the, the funniest part was is that uh, this, we used to have films right in here, and this guy, this deep drawing, Larry Vietnam, he was kind of a nosy guy with focus head in everybody's program. Yeah. And uh, so we were cal signing a bunch of moose poop. And, uh, and he came up and he was like, doesn't anyone smell that? You know, like, what's that horrible smell? You know, and he had the sense to lift the lid, like, oh, right as it was about, it. right as it was about like 800 degrees. And we oh, oxygen, oxygen hit it, and oh, he just he just got totally charred and oh, no. with moose poop. The moose and poop char. Yeah, the moose poop char. And uh, Larry was pretty good about stuff because anyone else would have been really offended. And uh, <laughs> he was just laughing. I was like, you deserve it, you know? Don't lift the lids. Don't, and, yeah. You know? Don't you know and he was like, oh, you know, right. <laughs> But that guy, Todd Spedding was his name. He was a graduate student in guidance and counseling. He made big bucks for like oh, a pottery bet. sale. He made these tiny little tea bowls and he made moose poop uh, glaze. Glaze, ash glaze. Wow. It was a great idea. It was a shitty idea. Shitty idea. <laughs> <laughs> some sort of a lock uh, wrap that you use so that it doesn't slip down? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you how that works. Not the one on the movie slipping up. We're arguing over uh, the, op the opening yeah. size. It's standardized. It's, it's okay, I'll be filming now. And then, so that's that's one thing that determines it. And then, two, you have a standard standardized form, right? And so it's going to be the bottom section is going to be, you know, a segment of a cone, top level um, mathematicians on a um, college level, and uh, and so I approached them at one point. And I was like, 
guess think you could help me to figure out like what the equation would be to, you know, say if somebody comes to me and they want a 37.2 gallon jar, like what are my rim height and foot measurements? Because it's a constant form. And they're like, oh yeah, no problem. Let's just do this and this and this. And of course, I had no idea what they were talking about. But um, and then, you know, some of these craft centers have really great things like fab labs. And so I was at one um, haystack up in Maine, and with you know the the officially sanctioned fab lab, you get like an MIT student grad trackable. Do you have a general idea of the weight of the clay you use for each jar? Sorry. Do you have a general idea of how much weight? Not during my apprenticeship. They they weren't weighing clay. Before long, I just would have these flashbacks of Chris Farley, you know, giving us, you know, living in the land, down by the river. So I said something to students about that, I don't know, only a couple years ago. And yeah. It's right after we got this thing and you could access stuff. So none of them had ever seen it. Oh, man. So I brought it up. They didn't think it was funny at all. <laughs> they don't, they don't know. That's hysterical. That's the best stuff ever. <laughs> I definitely got to the point where my son was old enough for it, and it's like, all right, we're going to do Adam Sandler, we're going to do Chris Farley, David Spade, got to, got to get him trained up on all that. Any strange brew? No, no, he doesn't know of that, but that's strange a good one. Brew. Oh my goodness! Strange, strange brew. Love that one. Hey. <laughs> That's where I learned piss off. I got a question <laughs> on the cap that goes on the top. Yeah. Do you throw that or is it the same idea? Uh, a little bit of both, but I um, I will be covering all of that. We're going to do an audiovisual presentation right when I finish this one up on the TV up there. And I have a great video of the grandfather making a lid. Okay. But yeah, it's, you know, you pound out a floor like you would for, for this pot and then you add a coil and, and you throw it. So there isn't, isn't paddling happening necessarily on that. Okay. Cascade. Okay, so now, so I got to go to England for a month about five years ago and I, I worked with Doug Fitch, who makes replica historical British slipware pots, English slipware pots. It's a red earthenware with white slip on it. And that guy is like a master of very carefully applying slip like this. And so that's where I learned how to do this pretty effectively. Because, you know, obviously this isn't how we, this isn't how we were applying slip to, uh, or glaze to pots in Korea, but you know, kind of pick up those techniques where I can and figure out how to make them work with the pots that I make.